So if you saw my most recent video about the gamble bug and the fact that this is broken and you can profit, you may still have a lot of question. Basically, the major feedback from people was that they didn't quite understand what was going on. They don't understand why this is valuable. They don't understand how you end up saving gold. And they don't believe that I had enough statistical relevance to prove the point that I was trying to make. So let me highlight right here what the bug is and try to very quickly explain why it's important. If you gamble circlets for long enough, it will eventually become a coronet. This coronet, when you purchase it, will always be a tiara or a diadem. These are really important because they are very easy to get very high level rolls on them, and I'll explain that in a little bit, as well as chasing the elusive griffin's eye. If you continue to purchase them, you will end up buying a bunch of circlets. And let it be known that while circlets can't become something like a griffin's eye, they can also be incredibly powerful. And we'll go into why a circlet can be so incredibly powerful. But the entirety of the bug is that if you sit here and just keep buying them, it will rotate between a coronet and a circlet. But every time that you buy a coronet, it will always be a tiara or a diadem. And you might even get something like this. The plus two skill, strength, Dex, all res. You know, this is a pretty good tiara. But what if they could be better? And how is it that a circlet can get all these really good rolls on it? And why would I say that tiaras or diadems are higher value? So here on Max Roll, we have the D2 planner. And what I've done is I've built arguably a perfect circlet. So this circlet has two to Paladin skills, 20 FCR, 30 strength, 20 dex, all res, and two sockets. This is a ridiculously powerful circlet. If you look at the level that the circlet would need to be to be able to roll these mods would be item level 87. So to be able to shop an item level 87 circ circlet 100% of the time, your character would need to be level 92. But why does this have to be such a high level? Plus two to a character skill, so plus two to Paladin, plus two to Sorceress, etc., etc., requires Affix level 90. Now, if you don't necessarily understand the differences between item levels, Affix levels, and quality levels, or how crafting and item generation works in general, you can check out my video here, where I go into a lot of these details for crafting, and all of those same principles apply to here. This says item level 90, but this says we only need item level 87. Why is that? Every circlet, coronet, tiara, or diadem have two really important values, their quality level and their magic level. For a circlet, especially on a high character level, the item level plus its magic level is equal to its affix level. So what does that mean? If we have three magic level, 87 plus 3 means that this circlet is high enough to roll at plus 2 to skills. Now, if you remember, I said that tiaras and diadems are more valuable. And why is that? A tiara has 13 magic level, and a diadem has 18 magic level. And on top of that, they also have very high quality levels. So a tiara, no matter what item level it is, will always be minimum affix level 83. For a diadem, no matter what its item level is, it will always be high enough to roll plus two skills in every other mod in the game. Whereas a tiara only needs to be item level 77 to roll every affix in the game. So let's apply that back to the concept of this gambling. Normally, people shop for coronets. A coronet has a minimum affix level of 58, so it's actually not high enough to always hit that plus two. For a coronet to hit affix level 90, it needs to be item level 82. So a circlet and a coronet have very similar value. And if you are a character who's level 92, a coronet and a circlet are the exact same item. They can roll the exact same affixes, and at level 92, there is no difference in them at all. So why does this matter? Well, let's go back to that gamble screen and let's look at the differences. So if you did not know, the cost of an item in the gamble screen increases with character level. So I have a level 91 sorceress, which for our purposes is basically a level 92 sorceress. And without any gold reduction on vendor prices, a circlet costs 117,000 gold. 
Whereas a coronet costs 166,000 gold. So that's a pretty big difference. That 30 to 40,000 gold difference is going to add up, especially if you're trying to super farm and super gamble for really, really good circlets, tiaras, and diadems. But again, at level 92, a coronet and a circlet can have all of the exact same affixes. So they are equal in value, but coronets are more expensive. So you might be asking the question, well, Mac, that's all well and good. I understand that the screen bugs out sometimes, but buying those circlets is a waste, isn't it? If you're using this bug, every coronet that you buy will be a tiara or a diadem 100% of the time. So theoretically, if you did enough data gathering to collect enough samples, buying enough circlets and coronets this way, you might be able to show whether or not the chances of getting a diadem and a tiara are equal to what you would expect on your character level. But it would be pretty crazy to go through and collect that much data. And it would be pretty difficult to actually calculate what your cost savings are and your time savings, right? One of the things that is really important to know here is that a lot of people will refresh the gamble page once the coronet goes away. So you have to sit there and wait until you get another coronet. Using the exploit, you could just keep shopping from the exact same screen and you never need to leave as long as your gold doesn't run out. But who would have the time to actually sit down and collect that much data? Especially when the community made it very apparent that even unless you're looking at thousands of samples, it really doesn't matter. What if somebody who was that ridiculous and that committed to a bit went through and did it? Well, uh, we did it. We went through and did it today. It took hours, but we did it. What exactly did we do? We compiled 200 data sets of shopping eight items from the screen every single time. So that was shopping 1,600 circlets and coronets, capturing how many were circlets, how many were coronets, how many of those became tiaras and diadems, how many of each one was magic, rare, set, and unique, and the differences between the circlets, tiaras, and diadems in each one of those profiles. It took a bit. It took a bit, but we got there. We stopped at 200 sets of data. Now, that's a lot. 1,600 items on top of the 500 that we've already shopped on stream that were showing similar rates to the expected values on a level 99 character. So let me very quickly tell you about how we compiled this information. We would buy eight sets of items from the screen, never refreshing. If it was a circlet or a coronet, we bought it. We then captured what each one rolled as, either magic, rare, unique, or set, and captured the difference on a level 99 character. The reason why a level 99 character is so important is because your chances of upgrading to the exceptional, so a tiara, and upgrading to the elite, which is the diadem, increase with character level. And a level 99 character, assuming an average eye level of 97.5, because that's how the equation works, you expect to see a tiara 25.75% of the time and a diadem 5.12% of the time, based off character level alone. And we did not shop only coronets. We shopped through circlets, and whenever a coronet came up, we bought it. Out of 1,600 total that we purchased, almost 1,200 of them were circlets, and 450 of them were coronets. Of those, almost 400 were tiaras, and 57 were diadems. Out of everything, the absolutely wild part is we actually got four Naja's circlets, and the chances of getting a set circlet should only be 0.1% of the time, and ours came out to be 0.34. That one was actually pretty buck wild. That's just variance. All the data here, and I won't bore you to death with it, these are the rates according to how gambling should work, 
and all of our rates for getting upgrades as well as rares and uh, magic versions of them are all pretty similar. Uh, we actually got a much higher diadem that were of rare quality, about 5%, but again, I'll consider that variance. Everything else was well within the margins other than our set. Now, if you take all of this data and compare it against what the chances should have been, our tiara chance was 24%, 24.6%, and our diadem chance was 3.5%. So these two together is about a 2.6% reduction in the expected value, but understand that these are not statistically relevant. And in fact, if you apply appropriate statistical analysis to this, all of these numbers look the same, and the savings are quite legitimately staggering. But I'm willing to say our data is weaker than it is just to give you that difference. Using this method, when looking at our data, circle it cost for how much we bought them at is 159 million. Coronet cost is 84 million. So our total cost is 243 million gold. Doing it this way. The argument is that rather than refreshing for coronets, you could shop this way. So let's compare it against if I only shopped coronets to get these values. That total would be 291 million gold. Now, I'm willing to accept the fact that our percentages were slightly lower. So let's reduce that total cost by that percentage difference to get the value that I'm arguing that you would save with this method. Even by reducing it by that value, you are still saving 47.5 million gold. And to put that into terms you may understand, that is 19 full stashes of gold. Go and farm 19 full stashes of gold on your gold barbarian, and then go gamble and realize how much time you are saving not having to farm that much additional gold, not having to refresh for getting that many coronets to get the same or better value out of the items that you are purchasing. Now, the last thing that I want to go over is Mac. I'm only looking for griffins. I don't care about the rest of these items. And I think it's really important to understand why something like a rare diadem is so valuable. There is a Herodric cube recipe that uses six perfect skulls in a rare item to re-roll it as a new rare item. The issue with this is that it actually reduces the item level over time. It basically takes the item level and reduces it by 40% every single time. What does that mean? Eventually, your item will get to such a low item level that it can't roll with any good mods anymore. But a diadem always has a minimum affix level high enough to roll with every single mod in the game. In addition to re-rolling Grand Charms for value, you can take rare diadems and re-roll them with this right here. Not only do you have the ability to infinitely re-roll a diadem for chances at getting really, really good items, the ability to shop for incredibly powerful circlets and the ability to save yourself gold and time, but going through 2,000 data sets, you are coming out to the same statistically relevant chances of getting these awesome items and strictly saving time. Time and gold. And the entire purpose of Diablo 2 is saving time and, and resources so that you have more time to farm stuff more efficiently. In conclusion, exploiting the current gamble bug that's available on the screen without ever refreshing that screen and buying through your circlets has the ability to give you the same valuable items that you're looking for, has the same chances of getting super rare and GG items that you've been looking for, and legitimately saves you time and gold, which is perceptible even after a single session of farming for gold. If you would like, I'm going to include this spreadsheet so you can check all of my map. I'm going to include a link to the original video if you haven't checked it out already. I'll include the links to the Gamble Calculator and the D2 Planner so you can go through and look at these items yourself on Max Roll. And I'd like to invite you to do your own testing and let us know what your results are. If you're willing to sit there 
and shop through these and collect this data and share it in the Discord, I will keep adding it to this table so that we can get a more clear picture of what is currently happening in the game and whether or not this exploit is something that's worth your time. I hope that this video helped to clear up any of the confusion, answer any additional questions, better strengthen our position and our theory on why this is so good, and potentially interested you in testing out yourself and seeing it in game. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.